West Texas Intermediate hitting its lowest level in nearly a week. This is OPEC announced it's delaying its next meeting, scheduled for Sunday. The postponement raises questions about the future course of crude production cuts. And here to break it down for us, John Kilduff, founding partner of Again Capital and a CNBC contributor. What, what, what were the, the Saudis seem to be behind this delay in the meeting. What are they dissatisfied about? Uh, good, evening, good afternoon, Tyler. Yes, they're dissatisfied about the uh, participation of the other members of OPEC+. Plus. Uh, in particular, it seems they're perturbed at Iran and Libya. Uh, but there's others out there, too, that are eating away at the efforts of Saudi itself uh, and undercutting, as we've been seeing with the price pretty much declining pretty steadily here over the past several months, uh, you know, undermining their, the Saudi efforts to, to get the price really back to $100 a barrel plus. In other That's words, that these, that, these, that these producers, whether it's Iran, Libya, or others, maybe some of the African nations, are overproducing their quotas? Well, it's more a, a case of like Iran, for example. So the Saudis put an extra one million barrel per day cut on the table and have engaged in it. Meanwhile, Iran's production has been steadily rising and during the same period has risen by about 600,000 barrels. So offsetting much of the Saudi cut. And then when you add in what the United States has done and others, all of a sudden, this big, you know, bali hoo by the Saudis to, you know, try to drain the, the swamp here in terms of supply is is falling very, very short, Tyler. Where then would you say the price of crude most likely goes next, John? Well, look, I mean, I think the Saudis were looking to hit a, a bit of a home run here as we go into the northern hemisphere winter, the heart of it, uh, that prices would, in fact, get back up towards that $90, $100 level. But now, given the uh, economic struggles in China and now Japan, uh, potentially recession in Europe and here, so the demand side of the equation is soft, Kelly. And also, too, the Saudis are going to have a heck of a time reining in the other producers. Uh, it's just how this has always gone. Uh, why they think it'll be different this time, you know, is kind of a curiosity to me. But they thought they had it. They thought they had it. So, therefore, I think you're going to see a test of $70 a barrel to the downside for WTI, uh, pot, you know, possibly down to the mid to low 60s, especially if we have a relatively mild winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, in the United States. That will be the killer for their outlook. What if, what if the Saudis sort of throw up their hands and say, you know, we're, we're done uh, trying to, to rope together or, or tape together this, uh, the, these price, uh, well, not price uh, cuts, but, but production cuts? And they've done that in the past, Tyler. I can tell you, early days of my career, back in 1993, the OPEC cartel fell apart, prices crashed. Uh, this is what happened in 2020, right before the pandemic hit. The Saudis flooded the market. They are the lowest cost producer. So that is their ultimate go-to nuclear option. Um, will they do it this time? I think they're going to put it on the table. And I think that's what they're going to be reminding all the other countries of between now and when they do finally meet next Thursday that, hey, we're only producing 9 million barrels a day. They could flip a switch and go to 10, 11, push to 12. And that would be a mess for everybody. So that is their veil or not so veil threat. And that is, again, their nuclear option. And I wouldn't take it off the table for a minute. What does all of this mean, John, for energy stocks? It sounds pretty bearish. It is bearish in the short term. Uh, but look, the, the demand picture isn't changing. It's going to continue to stay you know, elevated, robust. Certainly, we are, you know, vulnerable to various headlines, vulnerable to weather and obviously geopolitical tumult, as we've seen. So the energy companies should really, even if prices get down to 60, Kelly, they're minting money. OK, even in the Permian, where the break evens have gotten way down there towards the low 30s, let's call it, on a great average, they are minting money, doing great. They might get punished here and there, but they are a case of buy the dips for sure.